Hi kids! How was your week? I hope all of you are safe and are doing well. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Teacher Diwa and welcome to Destiny Kids Church Online. We call our church Destiny because we believe in that word. Destiny! Can we say that together kids? Say Destiny! There's this verse in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 that talks about our destinies. Kids, can we read this together? Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Did you like that verse, kids? That verse talks about our destiny, that God has a plan for each one of us. God has a plan for you, for your family, for your friends, for me, for everyone. And those plans are always for our own good. They are never to harm us. Those plans are for us to have hope and a future. That verse also means, kids, that God's plan for my life is always okay, approved, and the best. Can we say that together, kids? God's plan for my life is always okay, approved, and the best. So now, before we go to the lesson, let's begin with worship. Let's all stand up, set our hearts on God, and let's worship Him.
So did you enjoy our worship time, kids? Great. We pray that as we sang that song, it is really impressed in our hearts that God is a super strong God. So now, before we discuss today's lesson, let's review first what we've been talking about for the past weeks. So for the past couple of weeks, we've been in the series, Superpower Series, Our Superpowers as Followers of Christ. So who among you kids are enjoying this series? Can you raise your hands? So in this series, we've been talking about our superpowers as followers of Christ. But these are unlike the superpowers that we see on television. These are not, not the superpower of flight, strength, and x-ray vision, and the like. But these superpowers gets its strength not from a radioactive material or not from an accident, but our strength, our superpower strength, comes from who? It comes from the Lord. As it is said in our main verse for this series, Ephesians 6.10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. So in this verse, we learn that all of us can be strong not by our own strength, but by the strength that comes from God. So can you tell me, kids, what we've already talked about, what superpowers we talked about for the past three weeks. Can you tell me the three superpowers? So the first week, we talked about the superpower of words. The second week, we talked about the superpower of obedience. And last week, we learned about the superpower of serving. So last week, we learned that we should serve God and others. We also learned that we can serve God with our talents, that all of us have God-given gifts and talents. And all of us, even you kids, even if you're still young, you can still serve God and others. So I hope you enjoyed our lessons for the past weeks. If you haven't watched them already, you can still watch them in our YouTube channel. Okay, kids? So now kids, let's go to today's lesson. But before I tell you the next superpower, I have a question kids. If you want to talk to your parents, for example your mom or your dad, or even your siblings or someone at your house, what do you do to talk to them? Can you tell me? If you, you have a question or you want to talk with someone at your house, what do you do? Most of us simply just come to them, for example, to your mom. You go to your mom. Ma, I have something to tell you. Or Ma, I have a question. That's how we talk to the people at our house. How about kids, uh, your friends? How do you talk to your friends? Especially in this time that we are all in our house. How do you talk to your friends now? Are you able to talk to your friends? Maybe some of you are still able to when you have online classes. You talk online in Zoom or Facebook Messenger. You talk to them. And uh, that's the time that we are able to talk to our friends. So that's how we talk to our parents and to our friends. But I have another question, kids. How do we talk to God? Can you tell me? How do you talk to God? That's a great question, right kids? For our parents or the people in our house, it is easy to talk to them because we can see them, we can just walk to them and ask them a question or something. For our friends, we can just call them online or chat them so that we can talk to them. But how about God? How can we talk to God if we can't see Him? How can we talk to God if we only come to church? before once a week or our online Sunday service is also once a week how do we talk to God? that's a great question right kids? and that's what we will be learning for today 
our lesson for today is about prayer or the superpower of prayer. So prayer, kids, is simply talking to God. We can do it anytime and anywhere. Did you know that, kids? How can I say that, that we can pray anytime, anywhere? You know, kids, when we became a Christian, when we accepted God in our hearts, in our lives, He is always with us because we learned that the Holy Spirit is in us. That's why He is always able to hear us when we pray. And that's why we can pray to Him anytime and anywhere. In fact, God is more available to us than our parents or our friends because God is always with us and God always watches over us. God always hears us. Remember those things, kids. And for us to learn more about prayer kids, I would like us to watch this video. God's story, prayer. So part of God's story is about prayer, and it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know Him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified. So he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask him to forgive us and we turn back to him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen, too. That's because God is in control, and we've got to yield or give in to what He wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey Him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, when we ask, and when we yield, 
we remember that he's the one in charge and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So did you enjoy that video, kids? That's such a nice video, right? And maybe some of you are already thinking, Teacher, I already pray. I pray every day. I pray three times a day. That's great, kids, if you pray every day. But all of us want to improve, right, kids? All of us want to be better and have effective prayers. So today, we will be learning on how do we make our prayers more effective. Okay, kids? So today, we will learn how do we pray and what do we pray about. So first, how do we pray? Remember this word, kids. Talk. Can you say that with me, kids? Talk. So what's the spelling of the word talk? Can you spell it? The word talk? Talk. So talk is spelled T-A-L-K. And for our lesson today, talk will mean this. T for take the time. A for ah. Quiet. L for learn from God's word. And K, keep a list. So talk. Take the time. Ah, quiet, learn from God's word, and keep a list. So how do we pray? We talk, T, we take the time. When we pray, kids, we should take the time. What do we mean by take the time? We should set a time in a day that we pray to God so that we can make it a habit and we will remember to always pray to God during that time. For example, kids, we pray in the morning, we pray during lunch or before eating, we pray before going to bed or in the morning before going to classes or after classes. It is important, kids, that we set time to pray to God. But of course, kids, always remember also that we can pray to God anytime. The point here, kids, is we set a schedule we set a time so that we always remember to pray to God during these times. And we make it a habit to pray to God. Okay? So take the time. And next, A. Ah! Quiet. Quiet. So it is best, kids, that when we pray, we are in a quiet environment. There are no noises, no distractions, so that we can focus on God. Okay? So... When you want to pray, you can find a quiet place in your house so that you can really, really focus on God. Okay? And next, and we learn from God's Word. It is important, kids, that when we pray, we also read God's Word if we have the time to do it. So that when we pray, we don't just say our own words, but we can say the words that come from God. And also, it is through God's Word, when we learn God's Word, that God can speak to us as well. Okay? It is important that we read our Bibles. Who among you kids read, already read your Bibles? Can you raise your hands? Good job if you do. But if not, there's still time for you to do it and learn from God's Word. Okay? And lastly, on how do we pray is K. Keep a list. It is important, kids, that we also keep a list of the things that we are praying about or we want to pray about. So that when we pray, when we come to God, our prayers are complete. We don't forget anything. We suggest, kids, that you also keep your journal. You can write in your journal your prayer list or your prayer request, okay? So how do we pray, kids? We talk. We take the time. Ah! Quiet. Learn from God's word, and we keep a list. So kids, we mentioned that we keep a list. So what, what list is this? Teacher, what do we pray about if we are keeping a list? Are these just the things that we want? Are these just our Christmas wishes? Among your kids are excited for Christmas. Me too, I'm excited for it. 
But for now, let's just focus on this lesson, okay? So what are the lists that we need to keep or the things that we pray about? We heard these kids in our video a while ago. It was mentioned, we pray about PRAY, the acronym PRAY. So P stands for praise, R stands for repent, A stands for ask, Y stands for yield. So let's learn more about each one. So what do we pray about? We pray. So P is praise. Praise means kids that we are, these are the prayers that lift the name of the Lord high. It's like, it's like these kids when we pray, Lord, you are so good, you are so great, you are so strong, you are so mighty. That's praise kids. This praise also includes the things that we are thankful of. For example, uh, last week, you received something from your parents. And then when we pray, we pray like this, Lord, you are great, you always provide for us. Lord, thank you for providing, for giving me a gift last week. That's example of praise. It is lifting the name of God high and also thanking God for the goodness and for everything that you have received in your life. So praise. Next is our repent. Repent. Who among you kids already know this word? Maybe for most of you, this is new. So repent means kids is asking forgiveness. So kids, this is a type of prayer that we ask forgiveness from God. So we pray this kids when we did something wrong or we disobeyed God or we disobeyed some our parents or maybe we said something bad. We can pray about it kids. For example, you got mad to your kapatid or to your kasambahay. Your, the people in your house, you got mad. And you realize, hmm, that's so wrong. I don't want to be mad. You come to God and pray. You pray, Lord, sorry I got mad to my parents. Sorry I got mad to my siblings. Okay? That's repentance, kids. We ask forgiveness from God. And you know, kids, when we come to God, ask forgiveness from Him, He is faithful to forgive us, as the Bible says. Okay? And next is A. Ask. Maybe most of you already do this, that when we pray, we can ask God. You know why, kids? Because the Bible says, when we receive God, we become His children. That's why, kids, we can ask from God, because He is our Father, and He provides. So, an example of prayer that when we ask, is what we pray for every week. We ask that, the sick people will be healed. We ask that this pandemic would end, that a cure for COVID-19 will be found. Those are the types of prayers that are asking. And you know, kids, you can pray this prayer when you need something. You pray to God. Maybe you need something for school. You, of course, you can ask your parents. But if it is really difficult, you can pray, Lord, I need a cell phone for online classes, Lord, I ask for a cell phone in Jesus' name, okay? We can ask God, okay, kids? Remember that. And lastly, kids, is why? Yield. Can we say that together, kids? Say yield. So yield means surrendering to God's will. This is the time that when we, when we ask something from God, and He wants to give us something that is different from what we are asking for, we surrender to Him. We surrender to what He wants for us. Because you know, kids, He is God. God knows what is best for you, even if it is not the thing that we are asking for. So an example of a prayer that yields to God is when we say this. When we pray, we say, Lord, your will be done in our life. Lord, your will be done in our families. And you know what, kids? This is one of the best prayers that we can say. 
because we acknowledge, we say that God is in control over our lives. We are not in control of our own lives, but God is. That's why it is the best prayer that when we say, God, your will be done. Lord, kung ano yung gusto mo sa life ko, yun yung mangyayari. In Jesus' name, Amen. So that's what we pray about kids. So let's review what we've learned about prayer. How do we pray? Let's read this together, kids. We talk. First, we take the time. Next, we ah! Quiet. Third, we learn from God's word. And fourth, we keep a list. So that's how we pray. So what do we pray about? We pray. First, we praise. Next, we repent. A, we ask. And Y, we yield. So that, kids, is the superpower of prayer. I hope you learned something today and I hope you practice it. Okay? So now, kids, let's go to our memory verse. Our memory verse for this week is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Let, before we memorize, let's read it first. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Always be happy. Never stop praying. Give thanks. Whatever happens, that is what God wants for you in Christ Jesus. So do you like that verse kids? So let's memorize. So for us to memorize it easier, let's do it with actions. Follow after me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. Always be happy. Never stop praying. Give thanks. Whatever happens, that is what God wants for you in Christ Jesus. Let's do it again, kids. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Always be happy. Never stop praying. Give thanks. Whatever happens, that is what God wants once for you in Christ Jesus. So did you get that kids? Can you show me? First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. Good job kids! But if you still haven't memorized it, you can still keep on practicing. Okay kids, but always remember that verse kids, that we can always be happy and we should never stop praying. That what we talk about today, we can practice it forever because God tells us to never stop praying. And as we pray, we give thanks to the Lord because that is what God wants for us in Christ Jesus. So now kids, let's go to our artwork. For this week's artwork, we will be doing this, the prayer mailbox. So for us to do this artwork, let's follow this video. For this artwork, you will be needing colored paper, marker, ruler, glue, and scissors. So to do this artwork, Let's start with the envelopes first. If you don't have one at your home, we can make the envelopes. To do the envelope, cut colored paper into square pieces and fold it like so.
After folding the paper, make sure to glue these parts. Kids, for this artwork, we will be making 5 envelopes like this. After getting or making the envelopes, arrange them on a blank sheet of paper so you would know where to write the words. Write the word prayer on the top middle part of the paper. Don't forget to check if the position of the envelopes are correct. Then you can write the words praise, repent, ask, and yield on top of the other envelopes. Now you can glue the envelopes on the paper. Kids, you can decorate this artwork any way you want. Put blank pieces of paper on the topmost envelope so that when you have something to pray about, you can get a paper from that envelope and write your prayer item before putting them in the other envelopes. Okay kids, so enjoy doing our artwork, but before you go and do it, let's just close in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer. Lord, we ask that we will never forget to pray to you. Remind us, Lord, always that we can talk to you anytime, anywhere. And Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers. Lord, we continue to pray for the frontliners, that you would protect them. We pray also for the sick people, that you would heal them. Lord, we continue to pray that a cure for COVID-19 will be found. And Lord, we also pray for our families, that, all you, that you would always be with us, that you will always guide us and protect us. Lord, please continue to bless our parents and be with them as well. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So that's our lesson for today, kids. I declare yes and amen to all of your prayers. And I pray that God will answer them. In Jesus' name. So see you again next week, kids, as we continue our Superpower series. Bye!